Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Fabio Giannino, and I work uh, for IDS GeoRadar that, as uh, uh, Marco anticipated, is the manufacturer of uh, uh, GBSR and uh, GeoRadar, so radar technology. We are an Italian-based company um, that is spread um, worldwide through the um, Hexagon network to, to whom uh, uh, we um, we do belong. Um, uh, from the technical point of view, I cover the role of uh, uh, customer support representative for the company. And today, I am going to uh, present an overview on the two uh, technologies, uh, GeoRadar and uh, Interferometry, that has been applied uh, for the GeoFit uh, uh, purposes, uh, for the GeoFit project purposes. Now, uh, at this point, I would like to start mentioning uh, uh, one thing that the, one of the main, we have two main difficulties here. Uh, the first is that we are in remote, so we cannot uh, uh, discuss in, in presence. And secondly, that, uh, uh, so to say, I don't really know the, uh, um, uh, your level of knowledge of these technologies, because, uh, by the way, it is something that enters uh, somehow sideways with respect to the project itself. It means that both technologies uh, are used uh, for those activities that are before and during uh, uh, the implementation of such uh, technology mentioned in smart geothermal, uh, which means the perforation, the drilling of boreholes. Uh, and so they reflect with respect uh, to the existing utilities in the underground, so not to damage, and the effect of this perforation, this drilling, with respect to the existing buildings on top of the ground. So what GPR does and what the interferometry does is somehow to evaluate a priori with the GPR, the possible presence of interference while drilling and during the drilling, while drilling, still the effect of this with respect to the building itself through interferometry. Now, so as you can uh, um, realize, these uh, are something that goes uh, uh, somehow in parallel um, with respect. So is, is a sort of a, um, let's say, side subject with respect to, to the main topic of, uh, uh, of today's session. Um, I will present uh, two um, modules, part one and part two. In the first part, we'll discuss about GPR, GeoRadar. And, uh, and in the second part, uh, the um, um, interferometry for building monitoring. Uh, let's say that uh, the main framework uh, is going to be pretty similar, meaning that uh, we we'll start from the working principle and then we'll pass to the state of the art uh, in terms of um, um, uh, systems architecture for both GPR and GBSR. And then uh, we will have some example with data interpretation for both of them, talking about uh, some uh, possibility for future developments uh, with respect to both technologies. Of course, uh, you please feel free to uh, interrupt or make questions whenever you want, uh, even during my talk, uh, because uh, I'll be more than happy to reply if needed, uh, and if I can, of course. My intervention is gonna last uh, more or less uh, uh, 35 to 40 minutes, and I'll try to not to go too long. But let's start. So the GeoRadar is a technology that is not uh, uh, is defined as non-destructive, is based on the emission of electromagnetic waves uh, from, uh, uh, let's say, um, what is called antenna. And uh, the emission uh, of these uh, 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 EM waves is uh, um, let's say, address it downwards, so towards the soil. And the aim is to uh, detect uh, all those uh, um, solution of continuity that determines the geometry of the subsoil. Um, due to this, uh, the application for the georadar technology technique is uh, um, pretty much a variable. So we have application for archaeology, for utility detection, we have application in forensic, in uh, geological, 
geotechnical. So very many applications depending on system architecture and antenna type that we use. Uh, generally speaking, the um, uh, the emission, um, uh, the frequency of emission uh, of the antenna is pretty much variable depending on the antenna type. But generally speaking, the emission of uh, 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 electromagnetic signals ranges from 25 megahertz up to 2 to 3 gigahertz, depending on uh, systems type and dipoles inside the uh, the antenna. Um, generally speaking, this wide range of emission allows us to uh, go from a deeper application to very shallow application. Just to understand each other, what we mean deep and what we mean shallow. Shallow to us means, uh, let's say, the first centimeters with capability of resolution, capa capability of resolution within a few millimeters. Uh, so to say like uh, rebars uh, in a reinforced concrete um, or uh, on the opposite end uh, we are in the range of uh, 20 25 30 meters uh, with lower frequency antenna in the region of uh, 20 25 megahertz and this is for more geotechnical geological uh, application now how does it work it works that uh, if uh, in this sketch we have uh, this uh, young man here that is uh, uh, pushing the georadar on top of the surface uh, and we got this object in brown here during the um, uh, let's say the, the travel the system is uh, uh, just emitting uh, and continuously receiving signal now the uh, uh, it doesn't work but there was a small uh, video here uh, anyway the principle is that while pushing the system on top of the surface uh, the uh, radar emits continuously a signal that is propagating um, downwards and is uh, partially reflected, partially reflected, partially transmitted, and the portion of which it is reflected back, there is a system, um, um, an electronic inside uh, an antenna uh, placed in a receiver position that receives the signal and digitize according to all the electronics that is uh, inside uh, the uh, the georadar itself. As a sketch, we could say that uh, any GPR as a minimum part is made out of uh, an, a transmitting antenna that is mm, named uh, TX in this sketch. There is a receive which emits signal in the aft space. This signal is partially, as I said, reflected back and perceived in uh, rece in uh, receiving uh, position by the rx antenna this signal is digitized uh, with uh, uh, all the electronic component inside the antenna itself and visualized uh, through uh, um, appropriate uh, uh, visualization software that also makes the diagnostics of the system while using um, so essentially this is another schematization so we got Imagine that uh, this is the off space we are going through um, on top of it. So we push the system and the object is to map the underground through the, um, let's say, uh, use of these wavelets that are continuously collected, gathered, all one um, stack one each other along the space. Now, imagine to do this in an area in which you want to drill, for example, uh, a borehole for any purpose, and uh, you fear to have uh, uh, to intercept uh, some existing object, uh, man-made object, like, for example, existing pipes, uh, sewage, gas, uh, electric or hidden chamber or whatever, during an, opera or an operation where you want to generate a borehole, as we were mentioning uh, uh, before, for uh, the geothermal uh, um, uh, implementation. Uh, essentially, what happened is that uh, what we do is to continuously send and receive signals uh, from this antenna and digitize this signal in a, in a diagram that uh, uh, includes space along the x direction and time or depth 
in Z direction. The result would be a radar map like this one that is the combination of very many uh, of these wavelets uh, like this that are generated every time that the transmitter signal encounters a surface and interfaced and is reflected back with a given amplitude and frequency content that is stuck together in an image that is called the radar map. Now, the radar map depends pretty much in its shape by the direction of acquisition of the radagram and the direction of uh, and the position of the antenna and the, uh, um, uh, the relative position of target and antenna itself. Typically, if we cross an object from its main uh, direction, what we receive back is an, uh, what we call a hyperbola of reflection, like this one, that determines essentially a shape that is due to the fact that uh, the signal encounters uh, the uh, object itself uh, even before the transmitter being on top of it, because uh, the emission of the electromagnetic signal is um, in a cone rather than in a single beam downwards the antenna itself. And the beam is 90 degrees sideways and 100 degree frontways. Uh, the penetration of this signal depends pretty much on very many factors. Part of them depends on the antenna itself, for example, the amplitude of the signal and its uh, um, frequency content. But part of them depends pretty much on soil conditions. It means that the same antenna uh, the, sorry, the same signal with the same antenna uh, center frequency and amplitude uh, propagates in terms of depth uh, and uh, amplitude uh, received back by the receiver antenna, depending on soil condition, including its uh, electrical conductivity, water content, or presence of a particular type of soil, like, for example, clay. Also, the uh, nature of the uh, soil in terms of its compactness uh, might affect uh, the uh, reflectivity back of the signal and its absorption. So the quantity of energy that is cut to back and perceived by the receiver antenna might vary. So, Generally speaking, if we want to summarize, we could say that lower frequency antennas, so the one that goes towards like 20, 25 megahertz, has got longer wavelengths, so can reach deeper, but with a lower resolution. And in terms of dimension, these objects, these antennas are bigger because the dipoles inside are much larger in order to generate this lower frequency center frequency. On the other end, if we want to reach an higher resolution, we need to use a higher frequency, so towards the end of the gigahertz, but we will have less penetration depth in the region of a few centimeters to one, one and a half meter, shorter wavelengths, and the antenna would be smaller in terms of dimensions. One more thing is that we, we need to stress on is the, uh, for example, the different application that we might have. For example, Mr. Adrian before have been mentioning a few sites, including uh, Galway, including Bordeaux, including uh, Perugia, where we have been using different type of GPR uh, uh, with the different type of antennas. It means that uh, a georadar can be made out of one single antenna, which means one transmitter and one receiver, but we can also have massive array antennas. It means that we have multiple channels receiving in one go, and rather than single 2D sections over just below the direction of acquisition, we have rather a volume in a larger area, resulting in a more complete depiction of the uh, subsoil and modelization that um, let us br brings us from the single line data acquisition concept uh, to the array data acquisition concept. Uh, this means, in other words, that uh, objects uh, 
like uh, single antenna like the Opera Duo, the see-through rather than TR400 are single antenna systems. For example, this one on top left has been used in Bordeaux, whereas uh, on the lower right hand, uh, we will see we will see uh, array systems, uh, specifically the Stream C that has been used in Perugia, for example, or the Stream Up on the left side that has been used towed by a vehicle, uh, has been used in uh, Galway, giving, uh, uh, um, let's say, 3D volume of the underground features uh, uh, below uh, the ground in order to map the possible presence of uh, interference of pipes. How do we do this? Traditionally, the mapping is done uh, in single lines with a single antenna, crossing both directions perpendicular to each other in order to have, uh, let's say, a, a global uh, distribution of points in both directions in order to be able to pick up uh, pipes in one direction or in the opposite 90 degrees pipes rather than other features buried in the ground, in, under the ground. And the antenna spacing, it should be between one line and the other, let's say in the region of 50 centimeters, no more. The advantage of doing this with a massive array system, like for example, the Stream C, just to give a simple example, that the one we used in, in Perugia, uh, that inside the, the very same antenna, we have 32 channels that only uh, needs to be pushed in one single acquisition, giving uh, with an antenna spacing between uh, channels of a little bit more than uh, four centimeters and giving an high quality mapping on the under, of the underground uh, with a more detailed information on the subsoil down, down to a certain depth. With the Stream C, the depth of investigation expected is in the region of a couple of meters down. Um, this is instead an example of 2D acquisition line for uh, geological features. This is a radiogram in the region of uh, a little bit less than six meters, 34 meters of radar, 34 um, uh, meters uh, of length of the radiogram, and, uh, and essentially what you see here is the uh, let's say the um, uh, description of ge geometrical features of the so of the subsoils that can be interpreted interpreted versus other information that uh, the user might have. Another type of uh, application of the georadar is the characterization for of the um, railway ballast, but this is something that pretty much far away from the project we are doing. But just to give you uh, um, uh, an information about the possible, uh, let's say, typical application, depending on system architecture, on how this is fixed uh, in the in a possible vehicle rather than hand pushed, or um, rather than the uh, number of antennas and frequency of emission. Another typical application is for rebars detection. This is for um, this is in a, for a concrete slab in a, a very shallow environment. Um, so with the possi possibility to detect the presence of rebars inside a, a concrete slab with a resolution very high, obviously. Uh, this is instead a typical application for utility mapping of a large area. Uh, and this concludes essentially the first part of my talk with the, um, this deep learning algorithm we are working on um, for the automatic detection of, uh, uh, of pipes. Um, Sorry, I've been going very, very fast because uh, afterward I have another um, uh, training. So if there is uh, no question on this, I will go on uh, part two with the GBC. Yes, Fabio, is you it, can proceed. Is it okay with you? Okay, very good. Very good. So, um, next part of my talk relates to um, the um, GBSAR. Uh, so the interferometric radar, the interferometric radar for the purpose of uh, um, uh, geofit has been used uh, uh, rather for mapping the, uh, let's say, the above the ground. So whereas for the ge geo radar, we have been um, 
uh, discussing about what is down in the ground. So in, 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 for in intercepting, uh, uh, for example, pipe rather than voice or other features. Here we are talking about what is above the ground uh, through the use of uh, interferometric radar. The interferometric radar is based essentially on the uh, detection of, uh, 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 let's say, um, uh, movement, uh, displacement of object with respect to a radar sensor that is placed at a known position. So essentially, what we do is to place, uh, 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 let's say, uh, an object that is called uh, the sensor, the radar sensor, uh, and uh, we uh, essentially um, uh, monitor continuously, uh, um, let's say, the displacement of the object standing in front of the radar continuously and making an, inter an, inter an interferogram based on the diff phase difference between one acquisition and the, uh, um, uh, the next one. And this is the difference, the main difference with respect to the uh, real uh, aperture radar, the typical uh, um, uh, radar that is done through uh, satellite. The ground-based synthetic aperture radar is based on a technology that is called um, FMCW, so frequency modulated uh, continuous waves, and is, uh, its resolution depends pretty much on the uh, bandwidth of emission. Typically, uh, the bandwidth of emission of the uh, GBSR is in the region of uh, um, 200, uh, 200 megahertz because the um, uh, GBSR emits uh, in uh, our GBSR emits in a region between 17.1 to 17.3 uh, gigahertz with a bandwidth of about uh, 200 megahertz. So essentially what we do is to compare through the use of uh, what we call differential interferometry, compare the phase difference of one scan with respect to the next one that is given in two minutes time from one to the other. So this phase difference is essentially uh, uh, transformed into space and displacement versus the operator. So what we do is to evaluate the displacement of the target of the uh, GBSR with respect to the GBSR itself and see if this is moving towards or in the other direction. As you can see, this is something, as you realize, this is something that has got pretty much to do with the possible displacement um, inducted to a, an existing building during um, uh, drilling operations. Essentially, the GBSR uh, working principle embeds uh, the uh, advantage of having uh, a cross uh, um, a resolution in uh, uh, line of sight uh, very uh, small in the, in the region of 0 0.75 meters, 75 centimeters, to have uh, a cross-range resolution that depends pretty much on the uh, aperture of the uh, of the um, uh, antenna itself and the uh, coverage that is uh, up to four kilometers uh, uh, with respect to the rather red sensor. Um, these for the uh, systems that uh, moves uh, over a binary. There is also systems that can. Uh, 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 use the ArcSAR uh, technology and so moving uh, in uh, uh, in array of 120 degrees from uh, uh, a tripod. So basically, it is uh, um, uh, giving the possibility to look at a very large area depending on distance between the radar sensor to the um, to the object to be measured and the object in this case p imagine being p like a point of the building being measured throughout the scanning many times and comparing the phase difference between many uh, uh, moments in the same data acquisition as a result of this is a differential interferometric analysis between multiple acquisition in time that can uh, essentially, uh, 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 let's say, give an idea of the uh, displacement that has been uh, 
collected the uh, recording during the line of uh, along the line of sight. Uh, this is what essentially we have been doing, for example, in uh, uh, San Cugat in, uh, in, uh, in Spain. And uh, the result is an interferogram that is a map with a displacement point that are superimposed to the building that you are, uh, uh, that you are monitoring. For example, in San Cugat, we use the Hydra G that has been placed in front of this uh, campus, uh, school campus. And uh, essentially what happened is that uh, we have been measuring uh, through a point cloud, like in this case, very many points uh, during the drilling operation and measured for specific point of that building, the displacement along time with an accuracy of 0.1 uh, millimeter, so one tenth of millimeter. So the evaluation of this displacement um, during the drilling operation might be of very uh, uh, of uh, extreme use for the uh, uh, let's say people involved in the safety operation related to the uh, management of the buildings itself. Um, this is another example very similar to the previous one with a TBM, uh, with a tunnel boring machine uh, in, uh, in Italy. It's uh, different from, uh, uh, from the previous one. And it's effect uh, along uh, three buildings, building A, B, and C. Um, uh, and their displacement, uh, uh, the, the maximum is from zero to minus six uh, uh, millimeters during the uh, passing of the um, TBM in the underground. Uh, obviously, uh, what is the, uh, the, the application as, uh, as said uh, previously? The application, the possible, the application is those, uh, that one of monitoring the effect of any operation carried out in subsoil uh, uh, nearby uh, the building that um, is supposed to be, let's say, um, uh, managed through geothermal in order to verify the stability and uh, to verify if there is parts of the, uh, uh, the building that might be affected in a negative way during uh, this, uh, uh, this operation. Um, yeah, I reckon I've been uh, uh, very, very fast <laughs> and I hope it, this was not a problem to you. Uh, so if you have any question, I'm very uh, glad to, uh, to respond uh, for what I know.